And needs no introduction on this radio show. The band Eklund. Another stone right there. Sending out to my co-producer, Jack Webster. Listening in at Asylum Studios tonight. Part of the 2013 Eklund Singles Set. Which actually made the top 100. And we started at the top of the hour with music from the 2006 self-titled release from Tiny Fish. The track Motorville. And joining us in the studio are the two musicians of these two different releases and two wonderful bands. Simon Godfrey of Tiny Fish and a man who's no stranger to our program in Tom Hyde of Eccles. They're joining us. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How are you doing, Tom? Doing very well, yes. Yeah. So you guys, um, I mean, uh, we started a little late. <laughs> we had a great dinner, though. And, and, <laughs> and, and uh, we, we always make our annual stop when you guys come to, uh, to Dad's and Mom. All of our Viewers are watching tonight on Ustream as well, saying hello to them. They can see you. We're also filming this um, for our YouTube channel, which you'll be able to see as well. And, uh, the lovely Stacy Godfrey is filming. She's a longtime friend of the Gang Hero Packs as well. Say hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> so, um, first of all, thanks to both of you guys for, for coming in, first and foremost. Thanks for having us. Yeah, on. indeed. Always a pleasure. And um, now, Simon, this is the first time you've ever been on our show or it's the first time I've actually been allowed out of the house since I arrived in America. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you are from the from the UK obviously with the accent. Yes, yes and indeed. What part, what part of the UK are you from? From London. From London. Yeah, London, England. And and uh, uh, London Indy. Yes, uh, indeed. Very, very uh, different yeah. um, one thousand generation Roman me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you, you uh, don't do that here. No. Uh, um, uh, you might have to replace this mic. The problem is bring it down after. Um, but you um, you moved here because your lovely wife is here, who's a longtime friend of the Gaggy Road Pack as well. We're going to see her in just a bit. And um, at, at, tell us the story in a quick summation. You, you guys started chatting. And yeah, um, it, it actually came, I mean, as most relationships do, it's uh, it, it totally sort of like a, a confluence of events that uh, brought us together. I was um, playing out here with, with Tiny Fish, actually, at, right. um, at Ron's Fest. Right, right, it's pretty good. And, um, uh, uh, basically, Stacy was there, and uh, I remember at the time, sort of like thinking about, "Oh, that's a good-looking girl." <laughs> and, yeah, really. yeah, indeed. And um, but thought nothing of it, and uh, and and basically, we started uh, chatting uh, over the internet, and uh, and you know, and I I showed her my intimate collection of uh, silk underwear, <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> there really. you have it. And I think it's it's great, it, and. Um, um, it's the happiest I've ever seen her. So, oh. so I give you big props. And, um, well, that's because I feed her alcohol, you see. Well, that's <laughs> always a plus. You know, you know, try to keep things as uh, safe as possible. <laughs> but all jokes aside, though, uh, uh, Tiny Fish, um, you you guys started long before 2006 when the album came out. You guys, uh, a couple years before that, you guys. But you were in a band with some of those guys way back. Oh, yes. Yeah, we were in a band originally uh, back during the, uh, the late 80s. Uh, it was a band called Freefall. Yeah. I was in it with my brother, Jem Godfrey. Yeah, and a frost, by the way. Indeed, yes. Um, and, uh, and that was really our first, that was our little, you know, college band. You know, we, the, the, the band that we thought we were going to be megastars with. I don't know why we thought that being a progressive rock band, but there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we got to play a few gigs. We played with IQ at the Marquee. We played with, uh, with a whole load, host of other... We played with the, the great Jeff Mann of Twelfth Night as well. And wow. He was a lovely, lovely guy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that then it, it's, it all went away. <laughs> and then around about the start of uh, about 2000 or so, uh, uh, things started to... Uh, we, we came full circle, basically, and we were... We were we were back interested in uh, playing uh, uh, progressive music. We started out as a, an acoustic band right. playing the open mic nights in London, <laughs> and our songs got longer and more involved. Uh, you know, we started talking about dragons and wizards more, and uh, <laughs> and gnomes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and then uh, have a progressive rock. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And we just thought, let's just drop the pretense, shall we? And right. we, we we changed our name and we became Tiny Fish. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's a it's a great story. Um, because I remember when you guys, I, I, I had asked you for music, but I actually, I had known you guys. I had known you guys had come over to, to play the Red Spring Festival. Um, but you also, if I remember correctly, I think you were with Metal Mind Records out of Poland, if yep. I remember correctly. And um, Aggie turned me on to you guys. You, do you know Aggie then? Yeah, Aggie, oh. and, yeah she, and she, she's lovely, lovely Yeah, person. lovely girl, okay. And, and, and um, so you guys, you came here in 2011 again, as we said, that's how you guys met uh, your, your lovely wife. 
but uh, you also play the Summer's End Festival a lot. Yeah, we're a big fan of uh, Summer's End. Uh, two gentlemen, uh, one called Stephen Lang, the other one called uh, Hugh, uh, Hugh Lloyd. Um, I can't remember his last name now. God, I hope he's not listening. <laughs> That's good. Um, um, and we'll just call him Hugh Lloyd Person. And um, he, they, they, there is, I mean, basically Summer's End is, is, is the, probably the biggest uh, long-running uh, progressive rock festival in the UK. It's a great atmosphere, lovely sort of like family atmosphere. Um, and uh, I used to go along there not only as a, as a performer, but as a fan. I would go down and we'd, we'd hang out. And, and it was a great weekend, really. Yeah. And, and it, Kind of like a big part of your resume, you know, so it's a big thing out there. It's kind of like year fest, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, it's basically if you've played there, you've probably made it on the uh, the, the progressive rock scene uh, in the UK, and and it, and it goes further afield than that as well. Yeah, and as we mentioned, uh, for those of you watching on Ustream as well, uh, Simon is the brother of Jen uh, Jen Godfrey of Frost, who uh, does amazing work as well. I mean, Indeed. you guys are a very talented family. And, uh, God bless you. Well, thank you very much. Have a good I'll, night. I'll... Take care. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. No, too sweet. But uh, well, we also give a special love, by the way, to Sonia listening to us in Mozambique, uh, South Africa. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Sonia. How you doing? And uh, joining she, us she can't answer. Uh, in studio is, I don't know what you're doing with this guy. Uh, Tom Hyatt of Echolin. Who a lot of people say that. What, I don't know what you're doing with this guy <laughs> in relation to me. Tinder. That's what it is. Tinder. Tinder. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I showed him my lovely collection of satin underwear. <laughs> <laughs> what is this with this whole satin underwear? <laughs> well, if you have to ask. <laughs> uh, but Tom Hyatt, um, all jokes aside, you've been a long time friend of the show. I mean, uh, yes. Going all the way back. And uh, uh, the story of Echolin is an amazing one. When I got into the band, I was first, uh, we had first gone on the airwaves here back in late 94. And uh, my original assistant back then, John Most, had given me uh, the, the uh, sampler. Uh, the, uh, oh, yeah, singer, the As the yeah, World sampler. Yeah, As the World sampler. And he said, I'm telling you, I'm going to love these guys. And somebody tried to turn me on to Suffocating Bloom. And I remember um, the cassette was in bad shape. And I remember thinking, well, I can't play this on the air. But I, I started to fall in love with you guys. And then as soon as I was. I mean, when I'm like completely infatuated with the music of Echolin, I sent an email about doing an interview and having them in the studio, and they broke up. I'm like, how can this happen? <laughs> that, that is totally your luck, Tom. I know, <laughs> it really is my luck. So, um, but then uh, you were in the band, the band kind of split up, they went to two factions, you kind of went on your own right, for yeah. a while. You were doing a lot of Came games. Came out a free agent. You were like a free agent, right, and picked up by the Eagles. Um, <laughs> but, right. but then, but then um, the band got back together, um, you weren't in the band though. Right, time. yeah. Cowboy Poems Free came out, then May came out, and then you got back in right around when they were doing the DVD of um, uh, well, Stars and Gardens. Yeah, it was slightly before um, uh, Stars and Gardens. Yeah. Uh, they were playing the uh, June 2002 uh, Near Fest in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. Where I was crying. Where you were crying, yes. And because um, I think I might have hit you, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Brett had contacted me uh, after years of, uh, you know, sort of dead silence on my part, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but he contacted me in, I guess, around maybe May of 2002 and asked me if I wanted to play uh, The Cheese Stands Alone at, uh, at the Nearfest show. Right. And uh, I, it, just so many years, first of all, uh, I got in the studio to rehearse with him and he played uh, May for me. And I immediately, find, for the first time, heard Eklund as an outside listener. And I was like, oh, this is what people are really digging yeah. about this. I was, well, I in, saw you at the, at the, the album that eventually became the Jersey Tomato uh, double line. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that. That, yeah. was, that. that was at the Prague House. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I really was crying at that show. <laughs> I mean, like, there's a photo of me of holding a gingling bottle with tears streaming down my face. And uh, Jack Webster's always here's my beer, and and that and I and that that's really where I start to see you, and and I mean and I never meant this as an offensive thing, uh, with with the rest of the guys at Echolin. I felt that they were missing a, a major component, um, even though as great as May is, you know I would have loved to have heard you on that album for as good as Ray played it, and as he did on Cowboy Poems Street. I missed your presence. On I, those records. I appreciate that, but I mean, it was a different time. It, it was, was a different time, yeah. and I, I think Ray brings a whole totally other, different a, totally different yeah. essence to the band, and I wouldn't have that album any other oh, way. Of course. I mean, yeah. I, I it, it was funny because when I finally got to play uh, the song with them for Stars and Gardens, yeah. um, it was the equivalent of me being on stage with Pink Floyd playing Dark Side of the Moon all the way through. It was yeah. I was a fan. 
playing, you know, one of my favorite songs, even to this day, one of my favorite songs of all time, um, you know, with the, the writers of the music, and not only that, but with the string players, and uh, there was one point where um, I looked over at some of the string players, and we all just sort of gave each other a nodding look, like, isn't this the most incredible thing you've yeah. ever done? Yeah. It's so, a, and I have to ask, mm -hmm. playing, you know, like you said, being on the sidelines, mm -hmm. and now here you are playing me, how would you compare and contrast playing it as opposed to being a fan of it first? I mean, did you add your own little flavor to it, your own? I tried to keep it as consistent with what was what Ray did originally, just because, I mean, it was, I didn't want to change anything. Change yeah, I didn't want to, you know, sort of inject myself into it at all. It was, it, it, that was the one thing I really loved about the, I guess, for the 2000 Echelon, is it was everybody really listening to each other. I mean, well, with all due respect to our older stuff, we were all kind of like trying to show off our chops uh, to the listening audience. You know, I had to show everybody how much it because I was the only person who knew who Jaco Pistorius was right, back right. then, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and when you listen to As the World, I mean, we just did a couple weeks ago the 20th anniversary oh, yeah, yeah. Of, of As the World. And, and when, you, when you listen to an album like that, that is the yes close to the edge of the Echo Lynn catalog to that point because you guys were playing at such a high level. I mean, if you guys were a football team, you would have won the Super Bowl. I mean, that's how <laughs> amazingly tight. And it, it, and in some ways, I felt like that was what caused so much tension where the band kind of said, we're done, we're tired, we're, we're, we need to walk away from each other. Because the record label obviously didn't help. Right, they didn't help. Um, there's, there's various rumors about why they didn't help that recently surfaced, which I won't remember. Yeah, you know. But um, it, it was very intense. We were we were working, it was our full-time job. We were getting together um, five days a week, uh, working up to 10 hours a day. Down in Nashville, when we were recording the album, some of, uh, just because of the first time of working with a producer and everything, um, I was pretty wet behind the ears when it came to recording with a producer. And some songs took me from uh, up to 12 hours a day wow. to record and uh, uh, I just at the time it, it just didn't feel like something that uh, it's not what I imagined it would be you know right. it was wasn't the rock star thing that I was hoping it would be yeah. and uh, you know it was it, I just realized you know I wanted the security of a full-time job and mm -hmm. uh, you know I just didn't feel like I deserve I, I honestly didn't feel like I deserved to be there with the passion that everybody else was putting into it yeah so. but, but the thing is 2005, mm -hmm. the end is beautiful. Yeah. And Eklund has now a totally different sound from that to the double album that came out a few years yeah. back. And how do you feel now? Because it's a totally different atmosphere in Eklund. It's not, you know, I always tell people, you know, if you're, there are fans that say, well, I love the early Eklund stuff. And I want to hear as the world that kind of, but you're not really listening to Eklund if you're not loving what you're doing now? Well, pe people love what they love, you know, right. and um, you know a lot of people appreciate the chops of Eklund back in the day. Right. But uh, as we well, guys were like living with each other, I mean, like, right, yeah, like, yeah, it was we we. Well, I didn't want to say we slept with each other. We <laughs> ate, drank, well, and song, well, well, yeah, that's yeah. true. We are sleeping together. It was actually we are steeping together. I'd like to point right. that out because <laughs> I, I remember listening to that and going, I sure hope nobody misconstrues that. Yeah. But um, we were at in the post two thousand Eklund. We were listening to each other and we were writing songs that we wanted to hear rather than writing off of a riff yeah. and. I mean, Suffocating and As the World were very passionate and very sincere albums, but... Um, Suffocating was mine. Uh, I, I still love that album. I, it, I really loved how passionate and determined we were really had our eye on the prize for that. Yeah. And uh, But now we're playing stuff that we ourselves would listen to. We would listen to, obviously, Suff and yeah. ATW and everything, mm -hmm. but... This, it, we've grown as musicians as well as fans of music. And, and, you, can, uh, and you can hear it. I mean, when you listen yeah, to you. The, the double Echo Lynn album, I mean, speaking in Land Black, I, it brings me to tears. I mean, there's, oh, there's, it's, it's beautiful. There, it's there, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, it's inspired me. I mean, I'm a writer and I'm writing a book right now where a few of the songs from that album are influencing the story. And because of the depth of tracks like Island, 
the, 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 the uh, Speaking in Lamp Black, uh, the last piece on the album. Um, Cardinal Night. Yeah, yeah, Cardinal Night. These, this is echoing now. And then you guys, all of a sudden, there was more music coming out. So we were all like, you know, from as a media person, we're kind of saying, what's going on with these guys? Because I say that every time I hang out with them. <laughs> and, and, and it looks like the band has never been happier. I yeah. Mean, even though you're all busy doing your own thing, Brett does his thing, Ray does his thing, you do your thing, Paul's got his thing and his 45 kids. Um, <laughs> but, but the whole point is you guys are you're happy. I mean, that's well, it's, it's Eklund won't make or break um, us as human beings. In other words, we don't have our whole careers right on whether Eklund uh, fails or not. So it's, we don't, we don't have that pressure. Yeah, we, we do it because we love it. And we really have a lot of respect for each other. Mm -hmm. And so we, we all know, we're, we're all aware of what each person brings to the band. Sure. I mean, it's a, we're, we're called a progressive band, but I always said we're five completely different guys with five completely different ideas of what music is, but we all have such great chemistry, we know how to fit the pieces together and make something really great out of it. It's like, uh, it's like Jimmy Page said about Led Zeppelin, we're four guys that came together to make a fifth element, while we're five guys that come together to make a sixth element. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Now, now, how did you two get in contact with each other, with each other? Simon Godfrey, Tom Hyatt, how did this happen? Uh, I guess I shouldn't do hand gestures on well, the air. Oh, no, that's right, we have cameras, yeah. So Stacy, come on, come on, step up to the microphone. Yeah. Don't get nervous now, because you're not that. I first met, by the way, I first met uh, Stacy um, at the Musical Box. Many, yeah. many, many yeah. times. And we had a mutual friend in David Myers. David Myers, yeah. And, and um, so, I mean, you guys didn't, you guys didn't. Oh, yeah, okay, that's right. right. So, so, so you, that's how you guys became friends, and, and because of you, Stacy. Yeah, I mean, Tom and I have known each other for a long time, been a huge Evelyn fan since probably in between, as the, like right after As The World is when I picked up on the band. And I'm also a huge Tiny Fish fan, so this is like, this is so great to <laughs> <laughs> hang out with both of them. Um, yeah, so, so, so yeah. When, yeah, when Simon was coming over to the States more, um, you know, I was introducing him to my friends and family, getting him, you know, showing him around Philly, and one, a few times I invited Tom out. I figured he's another musician, they probably have a lot in common, a lot to talk about, and yeah, they, they hit it off. Um, yeah. There is definitely a bromance. The bro <laughs> we went out, what was it, what was the comedy night we went out to? Wasn't it that Dana Gould? That was it, we went out to yeah. a comedy night, yeah, Dana Gould, and we kind of bonded yeah. over Dana Gould. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are actually, look, you're, uh, are, are, are you still in the um, uh, Cayman County area? Or? No, uh, we, we moved out to, we're in Philly, okay. but we're in the like Roxborough, Wisconsin area. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I know yeah. you know, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And Tom, you're in? Boyertown. Boyertown. Yes. Okay. Um, That's all you can say about that. Is yeah. That's it. <laughs> well, it's a yeah. place that exists. Right. Um, so, you guys have done... So collaborative work. Yes. Well, um, we, uh, Stacy and what's your name? Oh, Simon. Yeah. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, they came out to Boyertown one night, and Simon um, uh, gave me his album. Very modestly, gave me his album, um, Motherland. And you know, uh, b being in a band, you always get CDs from people. And I, was, I thought, okay, I'm going to suffer through somebody else. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. But um, <laughs> um, he, he gave it to me, and I could not stop listening to it yeah. for months on end. And then he said, "Well, would you be interested in uh, make you know letting this album go live, uh, working with me on it?" I was like, "I was going to ask you if you would mind uh, if I would work with you on this." And we've been um, we've been playing together since I guess around October. It's about a year. Yeah, and uh, we. Mainly just uh, open mics and everything. Just the, it, we've been using open mics as a sort of practice. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually inspired me as a bass player. Um, I've actually just taken up uh, upright bass. Yeah, you were just telling me. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I heard some of his songs, I was like, this needs an upright part. And I go, I'm going to get one, and I'm going to learn how to play it just so that this song can have an upright bass. Yeah. And uh, and it's really. Uh, re-energize re me as a musician along with you know the current project with Eklund. Can I just say one of the things that, that, that most impressed me about Tom as a, as a player is that uh, upright bass is a very very different discipline to playing regular sure. um, uh, electric bass 
And uh, I remember the first thing he did is, I'm not entirely sure exactly how to play this, and then promptly started playing all the echolin bass lines on it. 